Hi guys, today we're gonna to work on this botanical, if my, um, if my thing stops moving, we're gonna work on this botanical leaf pitcher. It's fall in Michigan, I am so inspired. I love fall and I love Christmas. I love spring and I love summer. I love them all, I guess. But this botanical painting, what we're gonna do is start off with a nice yellow base to make sure the painting glows from, uh, like from the very depths. Make sure you use wet on wet, but when you use your wet on wet technique with layering, make sure it dries really well in between. Do a layer, let it dry. Do another layer, let it dry. And I make sure in my beginning layers that I'm letting enough water get down into the paper so it goes deep into the paper, not on the surface. So make sure you do that, let it dry in between. Your colors are gonna go deep into the paint, uh, picture, into the, into the paper, hello. It's gonna go deep into the paper and it's gonna allow you uh, that when you put more colors on top, you're gonna see all of those different types of layers like getting add on, it added on. It's like a stained glass. So let's get started. The key to getting a really good botanical painting is how you layer the paint. One of the things that I am doing right now is laying down my first wash. And when I put the water on the leaves, I put the water on it and I let it sit, I let it soak in and almost dry and then I re-wet it again. And what that does is activate the paper and whatever paint I put on that I'm putting on right now will go deep into the paper. And the reason that that's important is because I don't want to have paint on top of the paper where maybe I would just barely put water on and then I put um, paint on. When I go to put more colors on or layering it, layering it for me is when I let, um, I paint, I wet, I paint, and then I let that dry. And then I want to go back and I want to add more colors on top. And if I do not wet it properly, what's going to happen when I add more paint and another layer, it actually will start to mix that first layer. And I won't get um, a beautiful layering of colors. And in this painting, um, I probably did about three to four layers of colors and each time I was careful to wet the paper and then let it dry, wet it again and then begin to layer in those next colors. <clears throat> I'm on my second layer of paint for this leaf, and you can see how it was beautiful, 
the colors that were on that leaf were absolutely beautiful, but they were flat looking. And I'm looking to bring more of a botanical look to uh, this piece. And the way that I do that is by carefully laying the colors, adding the shadow, adding the contrast. And that's what I'm doing right now is adding contrast in there. Um, I like to see uh, the light first, then I like to add some contrast in if it's a complex piece and then I'll continue to add more colors in. I go light, dark, and then mid-tones. That's a pretty good process uh, that I use. And as this painting progresses, you're gonna see me add in really vibrant greens. I'm taking straight paint out of the tube and adding that on to the leaves towards the end. And that's a point where I can do that. At this point, I'm still blending and layering colors. And then there's times where I'm lifting off. Lifting off means that my brush has a little bit of water on it, not much. And you're gonna see me make white veins on the leaves. And I do that through that lifting off process. The colors are beginning to look really, really vibrant. And that's because I took time to layer the colors properly. And then even like, for example, this leaf I'm working on right now, the bottom right, there's uh, some beautiful yellows popping up. That yellow I put on after I already did a couple layers of the leaf. Watercolors are amazing. For me, they're very powerful and they're very beautiful. And just playing around with water um, how much water you have on the paper and watching it for when it starts to dry and it's not sopping wet but it's got this a little bit of a sheen to it there's a little bit of wetness where you can actually see it and then to add in drops of color and let that spread it's just amazing what watercolors can do For the final touches of this painting, I'm gonna to start to add in my shadow, and I used a little bit of indigo for this, and by the time I finished out, it really did look like a three-dimensional picture. Take your time when you're finishing your pictures up. Set them aside for a day if you want to. Take a look at them, refresh your mind, refresh your view, turn it upside down, do whatever you've gotta do. What does it need? And don't be rushed to do too much with a painting. Don't think that you have to add things in all the time. Uh, this painting, I wanted a botanical fall leaf. I didn't want a loose painting. So this is what came out of my efforts. And I am so thankful that you're giving this a shot. You're gonna have to show me what you did and how it turned out. Guys, thanks for joining me for this watercolor lesson today. Be sure to like the video, double, double like, and subscribe below if you want to keep tuned in. You guys have a great day. See you next time.